let's think about the fun topic of calories for a minute here. So I've got a package of this ramen noodle soup that everybody should be familiar with. And this package contains about three ounces or 85 grams of stuff. And it has a calorie content of 370 per container, which there's two servings per container. We all pretty much know uh, how this stuff works uh, on the back of a food packaging. Most of the world, I believe, uses calories to measure this. Uh, some countries use kilojoules to measure the same thing. What a weird idea, right? It's a different unit, but it measures the same thing. And most of us probably remember from whenever the calories are a unit of energy as are kilojoules. So we don't really have any, most of us don't have any reason to worry about what a calorie physically represents. You know, why would you need to care about that? We just need to care about how it relates to different kinds of foods and how much of them we're consuming. Most of us kind of know that a typical human being's diet is rated at about 2,000 2, calories per day of uh, total input energy. And so this package here contains a little over 10% or 15% of your daily calorie intake. Basic nutrition, right? Um, but let's think about a little bit more outside of that and what this number actually represents in terms of other stuff. So the reason I'm kind of creating this is I have an electric e-bike. An e-bike measures how much electrical energy it consumes in order to push the bike around. So we've got a uh, bike ride where I went for, let's see here, 22.97 miles and I consumed 336.5 watt hours of energy. So here we have yet another unit of energy. A watt hour is the same thing as a calorie. It's measuring the same quantity. It's just a different unit. It's like ounces versus pounds versus grams versus kilograms. But what's really interesting is this number here where this computes the watt hours consumed for every mile the bike traveled. 14.6. All right. That's like your miles per gallon in your car, except we're measuring it in units of watt hours instead of gallons of gasoline. Gallons of gasoline equivalent is another unit of energy that can be turned into calories or kilojoules. So this number here effectively is um, a slightly different unit, but this is very close, a watt hour is um, about three-fourths of a calorie, but it's not three-fourths. Actually, yeah, it's three, about three-fourths of one of these calories here. So what we also have to consider is this unit of calorie that's right here is what's called big C calories. The C on calories is capitalized. That's really important because there's also, more confusing, a small C calorie, which is one one thousandth of a big C calorie. So this package contains 370,000 small C calories. And that gets really confusing. Hence the reason that you probably really never worry about this stuff. But what we're saying here is that this watt hour, uh, one watt hour is about it, what is 3,600 joules of energy. I'm going to use joules to convert between this and the calories. So one watt hour, one WH is 3,600 joules. One of these big C calories is 4,184. Yeah, 4,184, pretty sure, joules. So then we divide that by 4,184. So actually, it's a little bit more than three quarters of a calorie. It's, it's, it's about 0.86, 86% of a calorie. So what this means is that uh, fourteen point six 
watt hours divided by 0 0.86 actually so this bike required 12.55 calories per mile on that ride okay so that is um, a really interesting number for anybody who rides a bike okay how many calories am i burning for every mile that I ride, you know, they make these bicycle computers that tell you that. Now, uh, they do that using kind of the same math that I'm going to use right here. What we have to also understand about this is that that is the calories that actually went go into the pedals of the bike. And the human body is nowhere near 100% efficient at converting food into mechanical energy. So the rule of thumb that it's about 25% efficient. So that means that for every one of these calories per mile that you dr ride the bike and push the pedals, you need four calories of food. So we would multiply this by four or divide by 0.25. So that means that to go one mile out on this particular bike ride, I required 50 food calories, which would be about um, 13 or 14 percent of this package so break off the corner of the ramen noodle and eat that it'll take you a mile on the bike now how many miles did I go 20 something 22.97 so that entire bike ride I would have used three of these packages in food energy, assuming that this number that they've placed here is actual burnable calories and not other things on top of that that the body can't use. I'm going to guess it mostly is because this stuff doesn't really have much fiber and unusable material in it. So there's only one gram or two grams of dietary fiber in here, and this package is 85 grams. So most of these calories would would be combustible in your body and um, I think that they correct for that anyways so that's just a little bit of an idea so three of these packages to push this thing on this bike ride um, the distance that I went the 22 miles now I used electricity to provide that energy instead of purely pedaling so it actually is going to require from a, a person was doing it um, a little bit more than that because some of the energy I put in is pedaling. So let's just say four packages of ramen to take that ride. And it was a pretty leisurely pace. We only drove an average speed of 9.7 miles per hour. So it's it was a pretty leisurely bike ride. But you can compare all of these energy units with each other. Now, what in the world is calorie actually represent? We know how it compares to this unit of energy, but what does it actually mean in terms of physics? So we've got here, we're going to do the original definition of a calorie. So back in the 1700s, when the science of thermodynamics kind of got started, they came up with this unit. And... Um, it originated in France, hence the kind of Roman-esque, Latin-esque, calor being heat, uh, unit. And they used it to describe units of heat energy that we needed. We finally, with steam engines and all this, we needed to figure out ways to measure heat energy, something that never was really required much before that. So what they came up with is, say, well, water is pretty much universal. So how much heat energy does it take to increase the temperature of water? What we're going to do is we're going to weigh out a kilogram of water. All right. Kilogram of water, a liter.
Perfect, close enough. So we have one kilogram, 1,000 milliliters or so of water, close enough in there. <clears throat> and what the calorie represented, the small c calorie, was how much energy is required to increase the temperature of one gram of water or one milliliter of water by one degree Celsius. All right, we're going to do a kilogram of water because that's a thousand times more energy, which represents one of these small C calories, or large C, capital C, calories, of which there are 370 in this package. So we have a thermometer here. We're measuring degrees Celsius. We're just going to stick uh, that in there like that. Let it uh, hit the temperature we want. Okay, 23.4 degrees Celsius. And then what we're going to do is apply heat to that water in the form of electricity. All right, we're going to use a 300 watt heater. This is a 300 watts. So 300 watts is a unit of power, which is energy delivered in a given amount of time which could be measured in watt hours. So if I leave the 300 watt heater running for one hour, I will use 300 watt hours of energy, which is the unit we have here. But we need to increase the temperature of this water by one degree Celsius. It's gonna be kind of hard to measure, but I'm gonna try it. Um, and we're gonna see how much electricity is required. I might not even be able to measure it but we're going to try it. So we're going to use a meter that measures electricity. Of course that fell in, we don't want that. Let's plug it in. All right, so right now it's consuming 282 watts of power, electricity. All right, that water is being heated. It has to be stirred in order to accurately get a temperature measurement. We have to go to like 24 degrees Celsius. That's probably going to happen really fast. Yeah, we're already there. And we've only used, I can't even measure how much electricity we use because it's so small. So we're going to have to do it in increments of 10. So when this hits 10 watt hours, We'll stop it and we'll see what our temperature was. We started off at about 22.5 degrees Celsius. Basically what I'm doing is I'm adding thermal energy to this water and measuring that change in the temperature. And then we're gonna measure the amount of energy we put in and we're gonna calculate the calories and compare it to the energy we put in. This is what they call calorimetry. This is the exact same thing that they do with your food, except instead of using electricity and a heating element to heat the water up, they actually light the food on fire in a device called a calorimeter. They'll mix it into a little chamber with oxygen and ignite it with an electric heater, and it will combust to ash and gases, and then the temperature of that will be, get, uh, or the heat energy will get collected in water and then they can calculate based on the quantity of water how many calories were released during combustion. So we've already gone up five degrees Celsius already. We're not quite at the limit of detection of my metering. We want 10 watt hours of energy put in there before I stop. So it has to get to 0 0.01. Oh, there we are. All right, let's turn this off. Stir it the rest of the way. To get all the heat out of the uh, metal part of the thing. Okay, it looks like the temperature stopped rising or close to stopping rising. Looks like we hit 32 degrees. Okay, so where we were at before was 32 minus 22.5 gives us, we increase the temperature of this water by 10, nine and a half degrees Celsius. 
All right? So the, the math on this, to convert that to calories, is just this, 9.5 big calories. Because we have a kilogram of water, 1,000 grams, we increase the temperature 9.5 degrees for every one degree you go up, it's one calorie, like this. So we added nine and a half calories to that. And like I said, we can now convert that into watt hours. We added 10 watt hours, or 0 0.01 kilowatt hours, to the container of water. So when we say that a watt hour was 0 0.86 of a calorie, let's just go back and can calculate it that way. Okay, so there's definitely some inaccuracy with our measurements. This is probably 11 watt hours instead of um, 10 watt hours because this meter just doesn't go down that far. You can see that the math pretty much works out. I had basically a within 10% measurement right there. That's pretty uh, much it of a calorie. So if I was to burn this entire package of ramen noodles, I would, have, I would then increase the temperature of this water by 370 degrees Celsius. Obviously the water would have begun boiling before it got that hot and it would have hit 100 degrees Celsius and the rest of the energy would have been used to boil off the water into steam. So a calorie is a significant amount of energy. Um, definitely much more than it would seem when you consider the amount of food that's in here. This isn't a lot of material. This food has an energy density. What? Okay, this is an important parameter for foods that people might consider unhealthy is how much energy per gram is it? It's 370 calories divided by 85 grams of food, 4.35. So what that tells us is um, that this is pretty much, you know, for the most part is carbohydrate. Well, you can see that the package has 54 gram of carbohydrate in there. Carbohydrate generally gives you about four calories of heat energy per gram when you burn it. There's also a little bit of protein, which is another four calories per gram. And there's a little bit of fat in here, which is nine calories per gram. So fat is m twice as energy dense, more than twice as energy dense as carbohydrate and calories. But there's the math of how they, you know, kind of do this stuff. So that is a calorie. And when you're riding a bike, uh, I could say that 50 calories like this per mile is a pretty reasonable burn rate for a casual bike ride at uh, an average speed of say 10 miles per hour which is what we have here so that's it